In this video of the tire series, we're gonna be talking all about tread. Don't let that slip from your mind. That was a terrible pun. Raw crawler all the way down to trailer tire. What's the difference? How much technology have they packed into this? All in this video. The first tire we're gonna talk about is not all that exciting, but it is interesting. It's a trailer tire. A lot of folks never think about the tires they put on a trailer or that trailer tires might be different from road tires or off-road tires. It turns out they are not interchangeable. You cannot put a road tire on a trailer and that's because they have a totally different type of construction. They are designed to carry heavy loads for an extended length of time. Basically, they have a very strong sidewall and they're not meant for steering input. Remember, a front tire like one of these here gets that twisting uh, motion from steering input. It can actually twist and roll, whereas this is meant to stay uh, straight all the time. Yes, as you turn, it's gonna have a little bit of slip, but that's all on the tread face and the compound. So I just wanna let people know that you cannot put road tires on a trailer. You have to put trailer tires on a road, excuse me, you have to put trailer tires on a trailer. And not that you would ever want to because it would look incredibly stupid, but you definitely don't wanna put trailer tires on a van. Now that we got the trailer tire out of the way, let's talk about all the tires I have in front of me. And they all look very different. And I want you to kind of disregard the size for now. We talked about tire size in another video. And if you wanna watch that video, you can see why you might choose a tire of these different sizes. But for now, I'm only talking about the surface of the tire or the tread. Let's start with a slick tire. It looks vastly different from any of these. And that is because it has no tread whatsoever. It is totally smooth because the goal with the racing tire is to maximize grip on a almost perfectly flat surface and in dry conditions. That's something that's important to remember as we get into a rain tire. Now, although this has no tread, it does have these small dots on them. These are actually wear indicators. And when you get through the wear indicators, you're actually going to have to throw the tire out. But often racing tires go bad before you hit the wear indicators. And if you ever wanted to know what racing and why it's so expensive, well, these probably last one session or one race and you toss them. And you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of dollars a tire, and then you get into a higher racing series and they might only use them for a lap or two. It's absolutely insane. The joke is, how do you make a small fortune in racing? You start with a bigger one. Moving on from the tires that I simply find interesting but aren't really applicable to off-roading or sprinters, uh, the slick and the trailer tire, this is what's gonna come on your Sprinter van as kind of your standard off the showroom floor. If you went and bought, say, a cargo Sprinter van, it's gonna come with a tire like this. And that's because Sprinters were initially designed in Europe as commercial vehicles, plumbers, electricians, et cetera. This tire is gonna have a high load rating. It's gonna have low grip, but a lot of tread wear, meaning it's gonna last a long time on the freeway. It's gonna be absolute crap in off-road conditions, and you're gonna slip in sand and all those kinds of conditions, but for long mileage motorhomes, this is actually a pretty good choice. But if you're going off-roading, you're definitely gonna want something in this area here. The other part I want you to notice about this tire is the lack of what I call side lugs. This is a lug. This block of material is called a lug, and this doesn't even have truly defined lugs. See how they all kind of run together? It's literally a hybrid between, say, a slick that is all flat and something like a rock crawler where you've got very defined individual lugs. So this is that kind of middle ground. And the reason you don't run slicks on the street, because you would get more grip out of this tire if it had no lugs at all, is water. And we're gonna talk about that with this next tire. So again, this is what comes on like a Sprinter cargo van. It's great for high mileage trips, but it's gonna offer you very little in terms of off-roading capability. And honestly, it just looks kind of lame. This is probably a tire that you've never seen before because they're incredibly rare, maybe unless you live in Portland. This is what's called a rain tire. It's also actually uh, a good snow tire. And there's many differences between this tire and something like this and this. A lot of the kind of hardcore mud terrain or rock crawler tires you would think would be good in snow and rain, but they're not. So, but the real interesting part of this tire, I want you to come in real close. See how it's got lots and lots of channels. Now compare that to this one. So what you've got here is these lugs are not even split up, yet this has constant literal channels. And the way that works is if you have a slick and the surface is wet, water that's under the middle of the tire 
might be squished to here, but it's still under the tire, meaning you have literally no contact with the road. Driving this on wet uh, pavement is almost worse than driving on ice, and so these tires are only used for dry conditions. What the rain tire does is it uses all of these channels to make that water, say in the middle here, get squished right into a channel. So your rubber is actually able to drop through and contact the road, and it doesn't hydroplane nearly as much as something like a slick, which would hydroplane constantly. These little wiggly lines are called sipes. Sipes are micro channels that allow water to seep in and it allows additional grip. So you can't really feel it, but hopefully you can see it. This tire is so soft that as I run my finger along these sipes, it's actually flexing and gripping my finger. It's pretty cool. It's kind of like running your finger backwards across a fish, how the scales in one direction are very smooth, in the other direction, they, they bite your hand. And so that's why a rain tire is so effective. The whole design is to channel water from the center of the tire out the sides through first small sipes that go into larger, basically canals or channels that get the water off the side of the tire and allow for better grip. So a rain tire is gonna have, or a snow tire is gonna have a softer sidewall. It's gonna work in cooler conditions, so it's gonna be a softer rubber. It's gonna have silica in it, and it's gonna have these micro sipes that are gonna help grip snow, ice, and water. Pretty cool technology, but very targeted at a single environment. Now what you've probably been waiting for, these are off-roading tires, and primarily you're gonna be uh, typically deciding between something like this. This is a BF Goodrich K03. It is an all-terrain tire. This is a KM3. I believe the M stands for mud, but I don't really know. Uh, a KM3 is a mud terrain versus an all-terrain. So all-terrain, as the name implies, is meant to be a hybrid. Instead of having uh, being a slick or having a bunch of uh, sipes or small channels for water. It's got those, but it's also got big tread blocks. And then you'll notice for the first time, it's got these tread blocks along the outside of the tire. So this is gonna be a great performing tire when it comes to on-road performance as well as off-road performance. And these blocks on the side of the tire are gonna become critical when we talk about contact patch in the next video. Notice on a tire like this, there are no uh, blocks or lugs on the edge of the tire because this tire is never intended to be deflated. What happens is, as you deflate this tire with weight on it, the tire actually flattens out and those lugs become part of the bottom of the tread. It's a pretty cool idea. They also help grip on some trails like in Moab or even the Rubicon, where you've got a lot of uh, either moon rock, as I call Moab rock, red rock, or granite for um, uh, the Rubicon it's gonna grip the sides of trails very well. So this is a great all-around tire, and the vast majority of you when you're choosing tires for your vehicle, my suggestion would be the BF Goodrich K03. Now let's talk about the difference between an all-terrain and a mud terrain, and this is mostly visual. The mud terrain actually uses the sides of these lugs to help grip things, just like on the rain tire where we had those little sipes that I'll show you again, these little sipes right here this is essentially that on steroids. They're big giant sipes and they're meant to clear mud. That's why it's a mud train. It's almost like uh, a mini version of a paddle wheel. So this is gonna take that mud and it's gonna churn it out until it hits something that is maybe a little bit uh, more uh, resistant to slop, or it's just gonna take that slop and spit it out the back like a paddle wheel and give you forward motion. On the all-terrain, you notice the blocks are smaller. You've still got blocks with sharp edges. They're gonna help grab rocks and so on, but they're not nearly as large as they are on the mud terrain. Now, the problem with a mud terrain on the street is that it's gonna be very loud. So you're gonna get a lot of whirring. It's also typically gonna be a softer compound because it's meant to go in mud and also uh, more focused off-roading. So it's gonna be a softer compound to be able to grip rocks and really do a good job off-road. It's gonna be very comfortable uh, and a very pliable sidewall so you can air it down very well. And it's got big chunky lugs on the side. So it's really the evolution of the size of the lugs as you get more and more into the off-road tire. This tire is gonna be um, still good off-road but not nearly uh, as grippy as something like this would be. Now, if you're talking about a place like Moab, you're actually probably better off with a less aggressive tire. So this, uh, KO3 would actually do better at Moab than this would, 
but in some environments where, again, it's sloppy, you're probably gonna want more of a mud terrain. Now we get to what I call another novelty tire, just to show you this, I believe, is a 42. Look at the sheer size of this compared. This is about the biggest tire we, this is a 315. It's one of the biggest tires we run on a Sprinter. You could barely fit it. This is an absolutely massive tire, and it weighs so much, I can't even lift it. This is off of like a rock crawler or a rock buggy, and it has definitely seen better days. This tire is totally shot. These lugs that we talk about, I can't even really show you the front. These are all torn to pieces, and that's because this tire is a very soft compound for grip. You're not really expected to drive this on the road. It would make so much noise. If you've ever heard one of those trucks drive by you on the freeway, and it's like, Wah! and I'm not talking about engine noise. It just sounds like a whirring noise. That's typically tire noise. So this would have a tremendous amount of tire noise on the road. And typically a vehicle like this would be towed to the trail or driven a very short distance to the trail because it is not meant for the road. The lugs go all the way down almost to the rim. This is a beadlock wheel, it's all beat up. We will talk about that in the wheels video, but you can see these lugs go all the way to the side and they're also very rounded off. They're not rounded off by, uh, on purpose, they're rounded off because this tire is totally shot. So this tire would have started out with much sharper lugs like this. Focused off-roading tires are actually a bias ply. They have a very, very soft compound because they're not really meant to be driving on the road very much. And then that bias ply construction, instead of having the steel belted radial, is gonna allow for that sidewall to really compress. And compressing your sidewall is what makes the tire wider and give you more grip. So in the next video, we're gonna talk about that contact patch and why it helps to have bigger uh, contact patches, these lugs on the side, and what airing down does to that contact patch. But this tire is gonna be run at a much, much lower tire pressure with a vehicle than you would on either of these uh, tires that you might put on a van. But I thought it was kind of cool to just show you what a rock crawling tire would look like. But if you wanted this to work, you'd want it brand new with those sharp lugs just like this so it could really dig into that terrain and get you up that obstacle so you can get on with your journey.